Recently, I had someone reach out and ask about how to develop flexibility when you have osteoporosis. She was trying to do Dr. Fisherman's 12 poses that have been scientifically shown to help with osteoporosis and realized that she couldn't get into a lot of these poses because she didn't have enough flexibility to do so. So today in this practice, we're going to work on developing uh, flexibility and mobility to get into Dr. Fisherman's 12 poses. I'm Sarah, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a 500 hour trained yoga teacher who also actually trained with Dr. Fishman um, to, for yoga and osteoporosis. I'm also bone fit certified and um, I'm a certified nutritional health coach. And I am all about yoga and health coaching and a bone building lifestyle. So for this practice, you will want a strap. You, we're going to use the strap when we get down to the mat. If it's not comfortable to get down on your, on your knees and to come down to the mat, at the point that I come down to the mat, you could actually transition from standing up to laying down on your bed. And you can still work on developing mobility and flexibility from your bed. There's not a requirement to get down on the floor. So on that note, I'm gonna set my strap off to the side and let's get started standing up. I'll see you there. Let's begin standing with our feet parallel like the number 11. Inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky. Exhale, hands come together at heart center. Inhale, take your arms up. And this time use your left hand to hold onto your right wrist and gently pull your arm over towards the left side, just feeling into your right side body. And come back to center. Use your right hand to hold onto your left wrist, pulling it over towards the right side, feeling into your left side body. So there's lots of different kinds of flexibility. We wanna be able to work through the different directions of the spine. Go ahead and bring your hands together at heart center. This next exercise is actually a modified cat-cow that we'll do standing up. So you're probably aware that you can't come into the cat version when you have osteoporosis. We don't wanna do anything that comes into a rounded shape with the spine. And this is a wonderful way to get some of that same kind of movement, but without coming into the cat posture. You could do it standing, sitting, even kneeling, if that works for your knees. Today, we're gonna do it standing together. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, cactus your arms out to the sides and lift your heart. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, cactus your arms and lift your heart. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, cactus your arms and lift your heart. And go ahead and bring your hands together at heart center. Having a mixture of both static poses where you hold a pose for a period of time and also dynamic movement are good for developing flexibility. Let's go ahead and step our feet out to the sides. Turn your right toes towards one end of your mat, and then go ahead and bend your right knee, stacking it over your ankle. So as you do this, what you'll notice from a flexibility perspective is that your hips have just opened towards the sides. So when you first start out coming into warrior two, your feet might be closer together and you might be barely bent. And then as you work gradually developing more flexibility and strength, because this pose will do both at the same time, then you'll start to notice that your hips are really open towards the sides here. So this is a wonderful pose for opening through the hips and for getting into your body to be able to do Dr. Fishman's 12 poses and actually, warrior two is one of them. Go ahead and take your arms out to the sides, reaching your arms out as far as they'll go in both directions. Roll your shoulders back once, and then take your gaze out over your right fingertips. So if we're doing this Dr. Fisherman style, then we're working to hold this pose for about 30 seconds. That doesn't mean that today you necessarily have to hold that for this period of time, but we're working on holding this pose for as long as it's comfortable in your body up to that 30 second point, and then coming out. It's 
and go ahead and make your way through center turning your right toes towards the side of your mat and turn your left toes towards the other end of your mat bend your left knee stacking it over your ankle sink your hips a little bit lower so when you hear me say sink your hips a little bit lower we're talking about increasing our flexibility bringing the hips a little bit closer towards the mat working deeper into the legs it also makes your legs work harder go ahead and reach your arms out to the sides for warrior two take a moment to roll your shoulders back once and take your gaze out over your left fingertips and go ahead and turn your left toes towards the side of your mat turn your right toes towards the other end of your mat bend your right knee bringing it back to that stacked position over your knee this time bring your right arm down to your right thigh and reach your left arm up and over so this is extended side angle which is another one of dr fishman's 12 poses and as you reach your arm up you're also really working through your left side body. And then see if you can bring your right ribs forward. Coming into extended side angle. Then bring your focus back to your breath. So we're working through the hips, through the side body. Flexibility, a few different places in this pose. And go ahead and make your way up to standing. Turn your right toes towards the side of your mat. Left toes turn towards the other end of your mat. Go ahead and bend your left knee, stacking it over your ankle, working through the hips. Left arm comes down to your left thigh. Right arm reaches up and over. And this time we're working through our right side body. And see if you can bring your left ribs even just a tiny bit forward. Just creating this sideline with the body feeling into your body developing flexibility through the spine and the hips all good things and go ahead and lift yourself up to standing so the next pose that we're going to do is side triangle pose, which is another great one for developing flexibility. Go ahead and turn your right toes towards the end of the mat. Create a slight angling in the left hip. So you'll notice uh, the difference between standing and then what it looks like with the slight angling. So create that slight angling, helps to protect the hips. Bring your arms out to the sides. And then as you bring your arms and your torso over towards the right side, bring your right hand down to your leg. That might be your thigh. It might be your calf. It might be your ankle or your foot, wherever it happens to be. And you could also use a block is the right place to be. As long as you're feeling the stretch and working on flexibility, you're in the right spot. Take your top arm in a big circle, reaching it up towards the sky. You want your arm to be in alignment with your shoulder, not tipping way back, but you want your arm to be in alignment coming straight up from your shoulder. And maybe just maybe taking your gaze up towards your fingertips. If that's not comfortable for your neck, always feel free to bring your gaze where it feels good in your body. and bend your knee and lift yourself up to standing turning your right toes towards the side of your mat and then turning your left toes towards the other end of your mat we're going to do that same thing creating the slight angling in the right hip this time arms and torso reach over towards the left side left hand comes down to your leg or your calf maybe an ankle or foot and then sweep this top arm up towards the sky Taking your gaze up towards your fingertips and bringing your focus back to your breath. And go ahead and bend your knee and lift yourself up to standing. Go ahead and bring your legs together. Nice work. 
Maybe give your legs a little bit of a wiggle and a shake out. And let's go ahead and make our way down to the mat. So this would be the place where if getting down onto knees is not comfortable, that you could shift and actually do this next set of exercises in your bed. I'm gonna come over to the chair to make my way down to the mat, and I'm gonna come through the hip hinge. So being able to use the hip hinge is a really important reason why flexibility is important for day-to-day -day life. Bend both knees, taking your legs out to the side so you're a little bit wider than hip width apart, bend both knees and stick your behind out. So you'll notice that I'm sparing the spine to keep my back nice and straight as I make my way down to the floor. So I'm placing hands on a chair and then I'm coming down one knee and then the other knee and make my way onto one side. Then I'm gonna lower down to the mat, coming down onto my side. And then before we roll over onto our backs, we're actually gonna come onto our bellies. So from here, go ahead and bring your hands just underneath your shoulders. Go ahead and lift up into baby cobra. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, lower down. Really, really nice. Go ahead and bring your hands out in front of you, taking just a moment to make a little pillow for underneath your forehead, taking a moment to let yourself melt into the mat, to melt into your bed. And then go ahead and bring both forearms out in front of you and lift yourself up. It may be that you're sinking in a little bit it might be that you're lifting up, depends. Flexibility is a, it takes time to develop and it can be really challenging. The most important thing is to listen to your body. Work to your edge, but not beyond it. You don't wanna ever do anything that causes pain. So it's important to listen to your body. Developing flexibility, mobility through the spine and also through the hips and our hamstrings. All of them are important for contributing to flexibility. This is a wonderful pose to develop mobility in the spine and also for developing strength for the spine. And you're stretching out your belly muscles. All right, go ahead and lower down to the mat. Beautiful job. I am going to actually scooch over here and grab my strap. And we are going to roll over onto our backs, being mindful of our spines. Beautiful work. So I find that since folding forward and coming into any shape that would cause the spine to round is not, it's not an okay thing to do if you have osteoporosis, I find that working on flexibility while laying down on your back so that your back stays nice and straight and doesn't come into a rounded shape while on your mat is a great way to work on flexibility. So go ahead and take your strap and wrap it around your foot and then take your leg up towards the sky and if you just went, what? I can't do that. That's totally okay and it's pretty normal wherever you are. If your foot's way out here and you're feeling a stretch in the back of your legs, then that's the right thing. And it may be that your left knee is bent and that's okay too. As you work on increasing flexibility, gradually working to bring your leg closer and closer to center, see if you can also work on taking your left leg out in front of you. It's okay if it's slightly bent, wherever it happens to be in your body, as long as you are feeling the stretch in the back of your legs, then you're working on the right thing. And then go ahead and start working on bringing your hands further and further up the strap. Just feeling the stretch in the back of your legs. And bring your focus to your breath. And 
go ahead and take your leg out to the side. And again, wherever you happen to be, taking your leg out to the side is the right place to be. And walking your hand up the strap towards your foot and then holding your leg out to the side. And bringing your focus back to the breath. Bringing your focus back to the breath can actually help your body to relax and to get you deeper into some of these stretches. and bend your leg and release your foot. Wrap your strap around your left foot, lifting it up towards the sky. Again, wherever you happen to be is the right place to be. And then see if you can work on taking your right leg out in front of you. It's okay if it's still bent. As long as you're feeling the stretch in the back of your leg, you're working on the right thing. It's important to have one leg out in front while you have one leg up because then it helps to make sure that your bottom is staying down on the mat and that you're protecting your spine. And go ahead and take your leg out to the side Holding your leg out to the side, bringing your focus back to your breath. And go ahead and bend your knee and release your foot from the strap you can set your strap off to the side and then taking both legs out long on the mat reach your arms up overhead just creating extension in the spine take a moment to point your toes and flex your feet to point and flex to point and flex let your feet return to a neutral position and bringing your arms back down to your sides and it's okay when you reach your arms up overhead if you realize that you can't touch the ground behind you it's still a good thing to reach your arms up and over as you bring your arms back down to your sides hug your right knee in towards your chest and if you needed to you could even wrap a strap around your knee so with your left leg out long on the mat, then work on bringing your knee into your chest. So this is actually working into your hips and working on increasing flexibility. And you can take your knee out to the side over towards the right, and then bringing it over towards the left, just gently working into the hips. from here go ahead and take your leg slowly gently across your body over towards the left side bottom is lifting up off the mat we're coming into a supine a laying down twist make sure that you can still comfortably breathe in your twist and reach your right arm out to the side to make your way back into center and then from here working just a little bit deeper into the hips we're going to work on bringing the knee to the outside of the torso and come into a half happy baby if it's accessible you could hold on to your foot and if it's not just hold on to the back of your leg or even your knee we're just working to bring the leg to the outside 
of the torso, working just a little bit deeper into the hips. And go ahead and bend your knee and release your foot. Hug your left knee into your chest. Again, if you can't reach, you could wrap a strap around your knee and then work on pulling the strap and pulling your knee gently towards your chest, gently working into the hips. Bringing your focus to your breath. And go ahead and take your knee over towards the right and then the left, just finding a little bit of movement as you work into the hips. And then go ahead and start to slowly take your leg across your body over towards the right side, coming into a supine, a laying down twist, and making sure that you can still comfortably breathe, reaching your left arm out to the side, to make your way back into center Again, with the option to bring your left hand to the outside of your left foot or to hold on to the back of your calf or even just your knee working to bring your knee to the outside of your torso just feeling into your hips working just a little bit deeper ahead and bend your knee and release your foot reach your arms up overhead once more coming into a big full body stretch and then go ahead and bring your arms out to your sides what I'd like to offer you for final relaxation today is to bring your feet together and to let your knees drop out towards the sides and just let gravity gently work to pull your knees down towards the mat or towards your bed. Just working to gently open through the hips, working into flexibility. And close your eyes and let your face and body soften and relax. to bring feeling back into your fingers and your toes. Go ahead and take both legs over towards one side and shifting over onto your side. Mindfully lift yourself up, making sure to spare your spine. And then from here, either bringing legs out to the edge of your bed or making your way into a seated position in a chair. I'm actually gonna make my way into a kneeling position because that provides good support for my spine. But if that doesn't work on your knees, then please sit in a chair and take just a moment to roll your shoulders back once. To take just a moment to picture someone or something that you're grateful for. 
and bringing hands together at heart center. Namaste. The light in me bows to the light in you. I hope that you enjoyed this practice and found it helpful. If you'd like to learn more about Dr. Fisherman's 12 poses and how to adapt them, especially while you're developing flexibility, I have made a couple of videos about how to adapt Dr. Fisherman's 12 poses, and you can check those out here. And if you enjoyed this practice and would like to learn more about yoga and osteoporosis and other topics relating to bone health in general, please subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you again soon. And also, if you have questions, thoughts, ideas, things that you would like to explore or that you would like me to address or talk about regarding bone health, please ask. I am here to help. Talk soon. Bye.